Today, I will talk to you more about the Android platform itself to give you some uh, overview of the Android platform and sort of explain some of the intricacies of how you design or uh, how a, an Android application itself is structured and how you would go about designing an application. How do you view your application as consisting of its parts and so on? So let me give you uh, a quick overview of Android. Most of the material that you see covered in this, uh, in Android-related uh, topics, will come from the developer.android.com uh, website. So you can go there, and there will be a lot bigger, uh, detailed explanation there. I have summarized some of the uh, important points here so that I can explain them to you. In case you want to read more, you can go to that website. And that's where I pick up all the material when I'm teaching uh, about the platform itself. Okay? And the uh, book, by detail, gives you little examples. Now, details book doesn't give you the kind of details, well, details, no details in details book. But uh, in terms of the platform structure itself, that is what I will explain in the class. Okay. Uh, but details book is a very good, uh, and, uh, again, another way of getting yourself introduced to, to writing applications in Android because details book also follows the kind of similar philosophy that I use when I teach Android in the lab, which is like little applications built one on top of the other um, such that you see different uh, features of Android being used in the app itself. Okay? Now, coming down to Android itself, Android is a software stack designed for mobile devices. Okay, When you look at the so software stack, as you will notice, it is a layered stack. And I'll go into more details of the layers uh, in, a, in a short, uh, short uh, while. This platform is supported by this um, uh, organization called the Open Handset Alliance, Google being one of the prime motivators behind it. And Android itself is open sourced. Open sourced is a uh, is a loosely used term here. Um, some portions of Android are not open sourced by Google, like for example the Dalvik virtual machine, which I'm going to talk about. Some portions are uh, open sourced, uh, and so on. Uh, we'll see them as we go along uh, in the later parts. But when you look at the Android platform itself or Android stack itself. Right down at the bottom, Android is based upon the Linux kernel 2.6. Uh, the latest version of Android is based upon 2.6.35. Again, this is a modified kernel. This is not the stock Linux kernel that you will find at kernel.org, but this is a modified, slightly modified kernel optimized to run on mobile devices. And on, on top of the OS, obviously, you have middleware, which makes it convenient for users to write applications. We'll talk about the middleware in more detail, things like libraries, the Dalvik virtual machine, and so on. And then, on top, you do your Android applications themselves. Okay. So, if you look at it as a three-layered stack, we'll go into details and look specifically at what each of these layers consist of. At the top, Android provides an application framework that enables reuse and replacement of components. This is, a, this is a very interesting idea that we will explore as we go along in the course. The fact that applications are designed as components, and a component from one application can be shared out by the application. Another application can make use of a component that is part of a different application altogether. How do we make that happen and so on, I will explain as we go along in the course. This is an interesting way of approaching developing of applications. You can leverage upon already existing applications and already existing components in applications to provide certain functionality that you can make use of within your own application itself. The concept of application and uh, the components is slightly different from the way you view applications in the traditional computing world. Uh, I'll come to that in more detail. Android, as you realize, uh, 
the applications are all written in Java. So obviously, in order to run Java code, you need a Java virtual machine. And in case of Android, Android has an optimized Java virtual machine called as a Dalvik virtual machine, which is, which is the JVM for Android. Java virtual machine for Android. And that is what supports running applications. Android comes with an integrated browser. The Android browser is again based on the WebKit um, uh, engine. If you uh, know something about browsers, you already know that um, both Safari and Chrome are also based on the WebKit um, uh, engine. Firefox uses its own uh, engine, and then IE uses its own engine, and so on. They have their own names. Um, but uh, both Chrome and Safari are based on the WebKit engine. And that is uh, the same engine used even for the browser inside the Android platform itself. Um, Android is optimized to, uh, to uh, enable graphics usage powered by a custom 2D graphics library, which we will explore a little bit um, in one of the later chapters. 3D graphics based on an OpenGL. How many of you have taken graphics course before? Not many. Very few. Well, uh, the amount of graphics that we will cover in this course is rather limited because um, this course is not about graphics, but I'll give you some flavor of, um, of how you would write graphics applications in Android, specifically targeting Android. But if you want to learn more about general graphics, then you should take a graphics course where these things are explored in more detail. Data storage, uh, in terms of databases, is supported in Android by using SQLite. We will go into more details about SQLite later on. SQLite is a, a, a subset of uh, SQL. How many of you are familiar with SQL? Okay. Again, just a few. Um, not a problem. If you take a database course somewhere, you will have encountered SQL. SQLite is fairly straightforward. Even I could understand SQL, and I have never taken a database course before. And I don't know anything about much about databases myself. Uh, so uh, that says that uh, SQL should be a fairly easy, uh, easy um, uh, thing to use in practice. Media support, both, uh, both in terms of um, audio and video. Android has built-in support for several different uh, audio, video, and still image codecs. All the standard codecs are already supported in Android. So you can uh, very uh, conveniently make use of any of the media already available. GSM telephony, again, dependent on underlying hardware, because as I showed you in the last class, in the smart, uh, when I explained the smartphone platform structure, the telephony part is sub supported by the DSP, which is a separate uh, uh, pipeline there for DSP. Um, again, GSM as well as uh, uh, Edge, 3G, 4G, whatever, that goes in there. And then um, Bluetooth uh, and Wi-Fi and all are supported depending on the platform. Some devices may not support all these uh, uh, different uh, networking uh, technologies. Some of them may support only a small subset of them and so on. So depending on your specific device, you, you may have access to one or more of these um, connection technologies. Camera, GPS, all these come more or less standard with a reasonably priced uh, platform, reasonably priced uh, device. Again, depending on the specific Android device that you have in your hand, it may or may not have all these different hardware features. Some of the uh, inexpensive hand Android phones may not have, for example, a uh, compass or accelerometer and so on. So you need to keep in mind that not all may be available on all the devices, but typically most devices these days come equipped with uh, much of these functionality. Application development based around the Eclipse IDE, which is what you will encounter tomorrow in the lab, uh, and uh, development of uh, Android applications themselves. Now let's look at the Open Handset Alliance and see who forms part of the Open Handset Alliance. 
it's a group of 80 plus. The 80 was a number uh, some time ago, and I'm sure it has changed uh, since then. It's a, uh, it's a uh, group of uh, companies that covers the entire uh, application area for uh, mobile devices. You have software companies that are primarily focused on application development. You have commercialization companies that turn out platforms for uh, users. You have mobile operators, your Verizon, uh, AT&T, PCCW, and so on. And then handset manufacturers, HPC, Samsung, um, Sony, whoever manufactures Android devices. And then you have semiconductor companies that supply the chips for these. So all of them have grouped together and formed this open handset alliance under which they all together support the Android platform. Okay. Now, if you go to the company's, uh, uh, sorry, the alliance's website, you will get more details there. But uh, that is more of business stuff. In case you're interested, you can go down there and uh, look up. Let's deal with Android itself. Android has a history of about uh, four years now. It started around September 2008 when the first version of Android was released. Uh, before that, Android was a separate company. It was a small uh, startup company that was doing uh, support, um, you know, uh, doing um, a platform for uh, mobile devices uh, on its own. Then Google went and bought this company and then integrated it into Google. And so that's how Google became a player in the, in the, in the mobile world. Google's intention or interest in acquiring this company was that this mobile platform would provide a means for Google to deliver its services to users. Google has a rich uh, array of cloud-based services that, uh, that it has, and it is trying to make it available on yet another platform uh, for users. And so that's where the you know, acquisition came into being. And thereafter, Google open source the code, much of the code. And uh, first version was released in September 2008. And then 1.1 came a short while later. These, if you, if you bought a phone in 2008 and 2009, you would have seen one of those. Um, there were a few around at the time. Uh, thereafter, Android has gone through several um, uh, upgrades. And um, again, here is a list of uh, all the upgrades so far. Right now, we are at 4.0.3. Uh, for some reason, the people working on Android seem to have a sweet tooth. So they seem to name different versions of Android based around uh, some kind of a dessert. So that's why we started out with cupcake, donut, eclair, then came froyo, gingerbread, honeycomb, ice cream sandwich. I don't know what J is going to be. Uh, J jelly jelly bean something like that. If I remember, like I heard something about jelly bean some time ago, and then K, and so on. So you can, uh, it's a it's a fun way of naming something. But you do notice that when you develop applications, you will be targeting something called the API level. Okay, there is a mapping between one of these to the corresponding API level and the versioning of Android. It's a little bit confusing, but uh, as I will show you in the next graphic, in the next uh, slide, you will notice that you can pretty much start ignoring anything below that because most devices that we're using those are disappearing, no longer actively being used by people, and you should start targeting devices down here. Ice cream sandwich is the recent one, just um, this month. Last, sorry, last month was the uh, was the release of uh, this. Android has a very frequent update uh, uh, release of new updates, so that's something that you need to keep in mind. But not to worry. Generally, you tend to maintain reasonable amount of backward compatibility. The newer uh, versions tend to introduce more and more new features 
to the application itself. From what I see, Ice Cream Sandwich is one of the most polished versions of Android that, that I've seen so far. If you have used older versions of Android, you would see that it's a little bit clunky, but uh, things are getting much, much better. And then, when you talk to people that use one of the two platforms, the other major gorilla being iOS, people you know, have strong preferences for one or the other platform. And then you, you would see frequent arguments online between fanboys of uh, the two platforms. Again, I don't take any position on this. I use both platforms and uh, seamlessly migrate between one and the other without any problem. To me, getting the work done is more important than playing with the platform. So, uh, I mean, if you, if, if you have used one or the other or both, you would notice that it's not a big deal. I mean, ultimately, the platform uh, features itself disappears, and then you will see the user interface for the specific application that you're using. And indeed, you would notice that many applications these days have both an Android and an iOS version and both of them look fairly similar to each other in terms of user interface. So when you're using specific applications, the underlying platform some may become uh, immaterial in terms of uh, your uh, usage itself. Okay? Again, I leave it to you to make your choices in terms of which platform you would like to, to, uh, to use in practice. To me, both of them look reasonably similar to each other. Each one has its own strengths and uh, weaknesses. And both of them seem to copy from each other. If you would notice, iOS 5 has copied a lot of features from Android. Uh, although they, they, you know, Steve Jobs has this, one, has this wonderful way of convincing you that they, that is the greatest, best thing that has ever happened to you since sliced bread. But so be it, okay? Now, coming back to Android itself, uh, this is the current state of affairs as of uh, February 1st, that is just last week. Uh, as you notice, 2.3.3 has more or less taken the largest slice of the pie already, and pretty soon, I mean, this keeps changing. Uh, as devices of other um, flavors become more and more available, 2.3.3 will start shrinking, and in turn, 2.2 will also start shrinking, and then one of these will start, you know, taking up a larger share of the pie. So this keeps changing day by day, and this is kind of the trend that you see over the past uh, few years. See, as you see, 2.3.3 is currently at its peak, and pretty soon, one of these three, three and four versions will overshadow it. Sooner or later, six months down the road, I will show a completely different graphic uh, compared to, to this. All this is from the developers of website, uh, as I mentioned.